Hey guys, welcome back to Flatback Effects. In this video, I wanna show you how to make this Vox Observatory intro animation. I'm also going to show you how to make this using all the automated tools built into After Effects. So I've got a new composition here and I'm just going to add a new solid. This can be whatever color, but I just wanna set this to be a white sort of color here. Now, the other thing I've supplied for you is a link to download this Shapes EPS, which is a free file. And I've added a link to that in the description below, so you can download that. Now, if you're new to After Effects or you want to know how to create these sort of animations, then check out my Animation Master course. It teaches you a ton of different animation techniques for creating infographics, maps, graphs, animated backgrounds, I also cover After Effects techniques that'll help you in replicating videos you see online. With over 40 videos and 50 animations to learn, you can check that out via the link in the description below. We're just gonna drag that straight into our composition. And this file is a .eps, which means it's a vector, which means that all you have to do is just hit this button here. And now you can infinitely scale this without losing any quality. So this is gonna work perfectly for what we're trying to do here. Now all I'm going to do is just turn off my background and create a new layer of text here and just type out my text. Now the text can be whatever font you want to use and it can also be whatever color you want to use here. I've just got my text here on the timeline and all we're going to do is be using this as a template for where the letters are going to end up. So with that layer, what I want to do is duplicate it. Then I can delete the text and just keep one of the letters. It helps if you take that background text and make it a different color and then line your text up over the top because we're gonna use that black text as basically a template for where those layers or those letters are going to end up. Now to animate my first letter, all I did was I hit Y on my keyboard and then reposition that anchor point. I can hit P to bring up the position properties and then create a position keyframe about there and then just drag this up here, create another keyframe about there and then move this across. So we've got this sort of animation where it moves across and then down like that. Now you can also take those and reposition them however you want. The other thing I also did was I added a little bit of rotation. So I hit R and created a bit of rotation. I hit U to bring up all those keyframes. I then brought my playhead across here and created another rotation keyframe there. And I rotated this something like that. So as the letter moves across, it then rotates and moves down into position. Now I can also mess around with those keyframes by dragging them in and out to speed that whole animation up or down. I can also make these all easy ease. And there we have that animation of that first letter. Another thing I did in my original composition was I animated the color to change over time. So what I did was I add a fill effect to that layer I just turn that off and make that the same color as that letter now. Then I can create a keyframe there. And back here, I'm also going to change this to be a black color, something like this. So we get that animation of that color over time. From this point, all I need to do is then just duplicate that letter, bring up all the position properties by hitting P, select all those with my playhead lined up and move it across to that next one, double click and change the letter to be whatever's next in the animation. Now these two animations are following in the exact same way and I don't want that. I want them to be at a different position. So with those keyframes there, I can select those and move them down to say a different position. And with the start, I'm also gonna start this one maybe back here like this. So I like how they kind of move in like this. But for this one, I also want to add a scale. So I hit S on the keyboard. I hit U to bring up all those keyframes. And I can also add another scale keyframe here and scale this one up. So I kind of get this animation, something like this. I can also off center that whole animation. And now we've got the animation or the letters coming in at different times. So I found with this particular effect, it works really well when you kind of off center or offset all of those layer animations because it kind of makes it more interesting as they're coming in at different times. Now from this point, all I need to do is just duplicate those letters and keep repeating that process and moving them around my space until I have all of my letters on the timeline. So now I've got all my letters basically lined up nicely with my text or in the rough same position and they're all animated in different ways. 
I've just used those same techniques and just kept applying them to all the letters. So there's nothing I haven't shown you there. I can now delete or turn off that bottom layer. So we just end up with those letters there on screen. Now to do all the other animations in this project, I'm going to use all of the pre-built animation presets inside of After Effects. The reason for this is they're super powerful and they're really easy to use because they just drag and drop. And most people don't use them or a lot of people don't even know that they're there. So one of the things I want to show you is if I take this layer and I come up here to my effects and presets. If yours is not there, then just come up to window and make sure effects and presets are selected. I can come down here and there's all these pre-built animations that I can use. If I come down here under the transform dissolves, there's these different digital box dissolves that I can use. I can use this one here and just drag it onto any one of these layers and it's automatically going to add an animation which is already preset to that text layer. If I move my playhead here along the timeline, I can also add another one and that's going to add an animation to that layer as well. Another interesting animation I added here was under backgrounds. I came down here and added the pixels to one of my letters and it creates this really interesting background look on your layer. What you can do is if you go into those settings of that and change the color to be that same yellow, you get this interesting background animation. If you go down to the fractal noise and create a keyframe for the contrast, you can also turn this off by dragging this all the way down. That creates an interesting sort of animation. You can also add that to one of these other layers here and do the same thing again by adding the contrast and then animating this down so it turns the effect on or off. So that's how easily I animated my text using the built-in animation presets inside of After Effects. To animate the shapes, all I need to do is just turn on that background shapes layer that we turned off. Then I can grab my pen tool here and single out one of the shapes on that layer. To this one, what I did is I came down to transition movements and I used the card wipe 2D fraction and just dragged that on top. Now this creates an interesting animation for this layer and what you can do is you can move that layer around to reposition it somewhere else in the composition. So somewhere like that. And I can also scale this up and down by moving it around like this until I'm kind of happy with the position that it's in. Now, because that's already pre-animated in, I just want to animate it out. So if I hit U, I can bring up those keyframes, drag those keyframes in. So it kind of animates on like this. I can move those to the start. Then I can just duplicate those by copying and pasting them, right clicking, and then just time reversing those keyframes. So it animates them out. So I can set that as an in and an out point for that animation of that layer. Now, once I've done that, I can drag in another shape here and I can also single out another shape by drawing a mask that goes around that. Then I can reposition this wherever there's no text. Then I can just drag in another animation preset, whatever I want to use. I can hit you to bring up those keyframes, copy those, paste them there to animate them off and also then just time reverse those so they animate out. Now the best part about doing the animation this way by using these animation presets is that once I've got a layer, all I need to do is just duplicate it, hit M to bring up the mask settings, delete the mask, and then I can simply trace out a new shape Hit you to bring up those keyframes and then just off center that animation. So it's basically animating in and then animating out at a different point. Another type of animation I did was I took just a, another shape and I just created a position keyframe here and just had it moving around the screen to different positions. So as it's moving down like this, it's kind of animating around all the various shapes that are moving on screen. And at the same time, also hit T to bring up the opacity. And then I could animate just a simple fade off effect for this. So I can duplicate that layer again. I can bring up the mask, delete those, and then just basically trace out a new little shape here so that we kind of get these two different shapes moving at different times. I can even off center these and that's how I created all these little various shapes moving around. You can even just hit U to bring those up and then just move them however you want. So if you don't want 
So if you don't want them moving in that way, you can just change the way they move. It's up to you. Another thing you can do is also get rid of the background by just simply using the extract tool. I can just drag the extract onto that layer and then just drag down the white point to remove that background. Some other various shapes that I added was some line effects going in or out. So what I did was I just, with nothing selected, just drew a line that say went across like this. I made sure that this didn't have a fill on it and it just had basically a stroke effect. Then I could come down here and add a trims path and animate that trims path with a start and an end. So drag down on the end point move across on the timeline here and drag up, go across here and then drag up on the start point and off center this start point here as well. So we get this sort of line that's basically just shooting across the screen like this. And that's how I created those little lines that are going around the screen. Now at this point, you've basically got all of the steps that you need in order to create this animation. And it's just about basically duplicating those layers, going into the effects and presets and just dragging different effects on top to see what sort of effects you can come up with. Once you feel you've got it in a roughly a, a good position, one final thing you can also do just to fill in the gaps is add a background in that also animates. So what I did was I just took one of these background shape layer and just duplicated it. And then I deleted the effects and presets that were on it. And I also deleted the mask that was on it as well. Then I can just rescale this up and reposition it so that it kind of fills the screen wherever I need it to be. And to this one, I just added a wedge wipe effect to that whole layer. And what I did is I just flipped these keyframes around so that they basically animated out right at the very end. So you've got that effect of it basically taking all of those layers off. Now there's too many shapes in there. So a simple way to just select the shapes you want is by masking the ones that you want by just drawing mask shapes. So what I can do is as I'm drawing these masks, I can just set them to be none. And I can basically just select shapes that I want to use in groups. So as I'm going through, I'm just setting these to be none as I'm working my way through. Now, once you've got all the shapes that you want, all you need to do is then just change them to be add, and that's gonna select just those shapes that you want to use. Then you can go through and just adjust that animation so that animates out at the right time. So if I go back to my original composition here, you can see that I've just filled it with a lot more shapes here using those exact same techniques that I've already covered, but I've just spread them around where basically there was empty space just to fill it a bit more, make it look a lot more interesting. One final thing I can do is also just create a null object and then parent all of those layers to that null object. And then with that null, I can just hit S and create a scale keyframe here at the start and then one here at the end by zooming in. And that, and that creates that nice little slow zoom in effect. Another thing I also did was add a background layer with a mask over the top. And I set that solid layer to be a slightly darker white than the white I was using on this side. And it creates just a nice little divide here in my background, just something more interesting. So although this animation looks a bit more complicated than it is right at the start, as we're working through, you quickly realize that it's just basically the same drag and drop presets that I've just kept using over and over and over again to create this animation. So if you found this video useful, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out other videos just like this over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.